Do you know why the British Empire was created? It was formed in search of tastier food and ingredients than Britain had. Of course I'm jesting. That wasn't my statement, but a humorous remark left by American writer Margaret Halsey. It's not just foreigners who make these kinds of comments. Winston Churchill once said, Britain is supplying a variety of food to the world, uncooked. There are countless self-deprecating jokes from notable British figures about their own national cuisine. There's even a common saying, if a Brit makes it, even a McDonald's burger loses its taste. Criticism of British food is not a recent phenomenon, even when it comes to identical fast food recipes. You might wonder, can that be true? While thinking about world-renowned British-born chefs like Gordon Ramsay or Jamie Oliver. But Gordon Ramsay specializes in French cuisine and Jamie Oliver in Italian. They aren't known for making British dishes. As a nation becomes more powerful, its cuisine generally evolves along with it. Once you're prosperous enough to feed yourself well, the next step is usually to seek out delicious things. This is the case in Italy, France, China, and, of course, Turkey, too. However, Britain took a completely unrelated path. Could there have been some special circumstances? For a food culture to develop, a variety of ingredients are essential. However, Britain is a country with limited sunlight due to year-round rain, low temperatures, and an environment not conducive to farming. They only grow about 10 types of vegetables at best, and the wheat variety isn't good, so the bread doesn't taste great. Unlike Japan, another island nation, the British aren't very fond of fish either. Mackerel, herring, salmon, sea bream, and flounder are about the extent of their seafood intake. Even lobsters, which are expensive now, were once only used as food for prisoners. The fact that the North Sea is turbulent and fishing wasn't easy with old shipbuilding technology surely played a part. However, the climate made it suitable for abundant pastures and the plentiful flat land allowed livestock farming to flourish early on. It is thought in Britain that this hampered the diversity of their food. For food culture to develop, like in France, the royal family or nobles must first enjoy gourmet food. But British nobles were satisfied with just eating abundant beef. Since meat was plentiful, they only ate the main cuts and didn't develop dishes using offal or bones. Brits, who cooked only meat while leaving an abundance of seafood untouched, have been derogatorily referred to as beef eaters for a long time. Among those who've ridiculed British food is the legendary womanizer Casanova, who once said, It's impressive how the British people can eat such food. Until the Victorian era of the 19th century, the food served to children in Britain could almost be classified as child abuse. According to the Mother's Guide to Child Rearing, which served as a textbook for child education at the time, it was deemed sufficient to give children dried-out bread and potatoes. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, taught that children are evil beings and their nature should be suppressed by not giving them good food. Therefore, it is no surprise that people who didn't have the chance to taste good food in their youth would grow up to be indifferent to flavors. The two decisive factors that contributed to the unpalatable reputation of British food can be traced back to the Puritan Revolution and the Industrial Revolution, both set against the social and environmental backdrop of the time. In the mid to late 17th century, Oliver Cromwell seized power in Britain after ousting the corrupt Catholics and initiating the Puritan Revolution. The essence of Puritanism was asceticism. Theaters, pubs, and circuses which were seen as indulging the mind in pleasure, were all closed down. Food was also included in this restriction. Pursuing flavorful food was considered sinful. Cooks were treated like criminals. This Christian fundamentalism, reminiscent of modern-day Islamic fundamentalism, led to a dark age for food culture in Britain. Interestingly, countries known for their lackluster cuisine, such as Germany, the Netherlands, and Finland, all turned Protestant following religious revolutions, just like Britain. The Industrial Revolution of the 18th century then dealt the final blow to British cuisine. At the end of the 17th century, Britain was hit by the Black Plague, which resulted in a high death toll. With a drastic decrease in the workforce to farm the lands, the cost of labor for farmers skyrocketed. Traditional aristocrats who owned vast tracts of land naturally took a significant economic hit. As a result, many large landowners abandoned farming and instead began raising sheep especially as the invention of the spinning machine led to a rapid growth in the wool industry. To prevent the sheep from escaping, 
Fences were erected all over their vast lands, leading to what was called the Enclosure Movement. Farmers who lost their land to the Enclosure Movement flocked to the cities en masse. They became low-wage workers, contributing to the success of the Industrial Revolution. However, their living conditions were miserable. Working 14 to 15 hours a day was commonplace. They didn't have time to cook at home. Most of them lived in cramped tenements, many of which didn't even have a kitchen. Even if there was a kitchen, they couldn't afford to buy firewood on their wages. Laws at the time were harsh, with capital punishment for cutting down trees in streets or parks. As a result of these social changes, the few remaining traditional British dishes and home-cooked meals gradually faded away, leaving behind only foods that were quick and easy to prepare. Even the affluent upper classes preferred French and Italian cuisine over their tasteless local dishes, leading to the disappearance of traditional British cuisine across the country. So, what did the urban workers during the Industrial Revolution eat to survive? The answer is the iconic British dish, fish and chips. This simple dish, consisting of thickly battered fried fish and fries, was readily available on the streets and could be eaten on the go, saving workers time. Plus, its high-calorie content kept people full for a long time, making it an ideal food for laborers. According to Albert Jack's book, What Caesar Did for My Salad, which amusingly unravels how various cuisines around the world were invented, battered fish was first introduced in London by Jewish immigrants, while fries originated in Lancashire, a region in the northwest of England known for its textile industries. Then, in the mid-19th century, battered fish coming from the south met with fries from the north, giving birth to fish and chips. While it's unclear how fries were introduced to Britain, the term chips for French fries was first used in Charles Dickens' novel Oliver Twist. With the invention of trawling fishing boats in the late 19th century, it became possible to catch a much larger quantity of fish than before. Moreover, the development of the railway system facilitated the supply of fish to the cities, making fish and chips a national dish that everyone could enjoy affordably. According to What Caesar Did for My Salad, religion played a significant role in the rapid spread of fish and chips in Britain. Until the mid-16th century, eating meat on Fridays in the UK could potentially lead to capital punishment. This was due to the belief that Jesus was crucified on a Friday, making it a day of atonement during which people would abstain from meat. Therefore, a long-standing tradition of eating fish instead of meat on Fridays existed. With the advent of fish and chips, long lines formed to purchase the dish every Friday, enhancing its nationwide fame. Even today this tradition persists, with fish and chips accounting for 20% of all takeout food sold in Britain on Fridays. George Orwell, the famous British author of Animal Farm and 1984, once said, Fish and chips averted revolution in the UK. He believed that the satiety brought by fish and chips helped the British endure religious oppression, the hardships of the Industrial Revolution, and the horrors of the First and Second World Wars. Truly, fish and chips was a comforting meal that stood by the British people in times of difficulty. Notably, fish and chips made headlines when it was served at the wedding receptions of British football star Wayne Rooney and Kate Winslet, the lead actress in the movie Titanic. The presence of such a humble dish at these affluent stars' events seems to symbolize its enduring status as a national food. You might wonder, is British food limited to simple dishes like fish and chips? But that's certainly not the case. While British cuisine might not have the best reputation for taste, there are countless gourmet restaurants in Britain. As the country that built an empire where the sun never sets, Britain introduced a diverse range of delicious dishes from around the world, as if retaliating against their own cuisine. Therefore, while it might be hard to find traditional British restaurants, the country is teeming with popular establishments, serving Thai, Indian, Chinese, Vietnamese, French, and Italian food. This has led to the near extinction of British cuisine. The sudden influx of tasty and affordable foreign foods dominated the dining industry, causing most chefs who specialized in British cuisine to lose their place. This is the final reason why British food has earned a reputation for being tasteless.